Taylor and Polly here, and we are continuing on with our interviews for Stomach Cancer Awareness Month. And I don't know if you caught yesterday's interview with our cousin Stephanie. Stephanie Carey, or I'm sorry, Stephanie shares the CDH1 genetic mutation with us. So if you haven't listened to that interview, it's so interesting. Go over there and check it out. Stephanie has not. <laughs> we were having technical difficulty. Oh, here we go. Oh, there we we're go. all together. <laughs> Hi, Becca. Hi. 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 We're so happy to have you join us today. I know there's many people who um, are going to be so interested in hearing your story. In fact, Taylor and I were just saying, we feel like we're speaking to a celebrity because we've been following you for so long. <laughs> Even before you were Scarlet Seahorse when you were a low-carb Lolita, we've been watching your story. Oh, thank and you. We yeah. feel like we know you in a way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's been an interesting journey for sure. Um, yeah, yeah well, I don't know, you know, where, where you want to start with a story, we can start back at the beginning or? Yeah, absolutely. We want to know what made you discover that you carry the CDH1 mutation. Yeah, a total accident. Um, I had no idea, no symptoms, um, wasn't really thinking about uh, family genetics at all. And this actually started almost a year ago. So November of last year, I was getting ready to turn a big 5-0. And so I thought it would be a great uh, time to actually go into the doctor. And the only thing I was really concerned about was weight management. So I I've always been a really healthy person uh, who really doesn't like to go to the doctor. So the only thing that really pushed me to go was, you know, maybe getting a little thinner. So I went in to talk to my nurse practitioner. And um, she she just started talking about family history and said, tell me about your family. Uh, and apparently I was rambling on about all of these folks um, on my dad's side who had cancer. Um, and I wasn't really raised um, close to that family. So it never touched me personally. I would just hear, oh, so-and-so has cancer. And yeah, it doesn't really affect me. I'm really healthy. That's what I would always say. Um, and she just suggested I take a genetic test. Um, insurance covered it because we had listed all of these people on my dad's side who had all of these different forms of cancer. Um, and I come back with the CDH1 gene mutation, which needs be expected. Um, she was shocked. You know, the, the genetic counselor was shocked. Um, and uh, I was shocked. It took a while. From November, I didn't know my results until March. And oh, wow, that which, took a long time. It did. They lost my results one time. It was, it just took a long time. I live in a really small town. So everything just takes a little longer. Um, and from the day I found out about it, um, I was on a Zoom call with Dr. Davis from the NIH seven days later. Wow. Uh, yeah, I just don't mess around. With stuff. How did you know? How did you find out about NIH? I am a researchaholic. And so probably in 24 hours of Talking to the genetic counselor, I had found uh, no stomach for cancer. Oh, right. Wow. And, okay. and I'm not sure who runs that, but they're amazing. And they actually su suggested uh, Dr. Davis, and they actually um, and they said also the folks at MD Anderson would be good to contact too. And and so I contacted both of those uh, doctors, and within 24 hours, both of those doctors had returned my email. Wow! Wow! wow. That's incredible. Yes. And and so within seven days of knowing that I had this, I had Zoom appointments with both of those doctors. So you knew immediately how serious this, this genetic mutation was. Like you took it seriously, because I know a lot of people yeah. who are diagnosed or have the results from their genetic tests and are like, oh, whatever, that's not gonna happen to me. But you knew immediately. Yeah, I, I, well, I kind of dove probably, I probably dove a little too deep into the internet. <laughs> and um, yeah, you know, I just ha had this feeling like this is something I have to do right away. And I can't really explain why uh, a lot of people thought I was crazy. A lot of people thought, wow, you're kind of rushing this decision. You know, you can't live without a stomach. And uh, don't you think maybe you need a second opinion? I got all kinds of um, different that. opinions. Yeah. yeah. Are you sure? Uh, but I just knew I just knew that this is the direction that I wanted to go. And um, so we actually, when I got on the phone with Dr. Davis, he impressed me so much um, mm -hmm. that I knew he was the right person for me and that NIH was the right place for me. Yeah. And I had my, I actually had my TG, my total gastrectomy in July. 
Um, we pushed it out because we had one more child who was getting married and they really suggested, uh, you know, not having a surgery prior to a wedding right. if you want to enjoy yourself. So, uh, so I pushed it out to July and I had it in July. So you weren't even considering doing surveillance in any shape or form, right? But you did no. have your biopsies. You had an endoscopy with biopsies. That sh did that show signet cells? It did. So, you know, they had, they schedule your endoscopy a month before your surgery. That was my first trip out there. So we did that in June and um, we did an endoscopy, a colonoscopy, went through all of the tests and, uh, and I did show five patches of cells. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. And so he said, well, either we're really lucky and we're just hitting all of the spots that have cells or, you know, he kind of trails off because he doesn't really like to give a lot of bad news. So yeah, maybe we're lucky. And so it's good that you're coming in for preventative surgery. And in my mind, the whole time, this is preventative surgery, because again, I, there is nothing wrong with me physically. I've had no symptoms. I don't even get into indigestion. Oh, wow. And so, wow. yeah, nothing at all. And so, so we go in for surgery and, you know, you wait about three weeks for your pathology results. And he called and I was, ever. <laughs> yeah. It, and fortunately my husband just happened to be home. It was like lunchtime when the call came in and, uh, you know, Dr. Davis, he said, I know this is probably not what you want to hear, but you have stage three cancer. <gasps> oh my gosh. Wow. I didn't even yeah. know. Wow. I thought it was stage two. I didn't know it was stage three. Either. Oh my God. Yeah. And so I thought, wow, okay, that's not what I was, you know, going in for. Thank uh, God. So, I mean, you're nurse practitioner. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You yeah. saved your so, life. Wow. She did. Uh, every time we see each other, we cry. Uh, but it was, uh, it was a shocker. I mean, there's nothing wrong with me, you know, going in. I No symptoms, no healthy. pain above your belly button, nothing. And nothing. that's what they say about diffuse gastric cancer, right? Is that you don't yeah. experience symptoms most of the time until it gets to the later stages. Yeah. So I, I, stage I know some people have, but I, I didn't. I didn't have any symptoms at all. Oh, wow. Not even feeling of like tired or anything like that. Nothing. Wow. No. Now, Nothing. when did this, so when did you get this diagnosis? Was that November? Right. In the, the first time that I got tested was, uh, we got the results in March. Oh. We started the testing in November, got the results in March. We, in June, we did our pre-surgery. Okay. Um, uh, and I, I had surgery. Um, yeah, interesting. So it had gone to my lymph nodes already. And wow. so they also removed, not all of them. I think he said 15. So he took those out too. Um, he took my gallbladder out too. And then he said, you know, unfortunately you'll have to follow up with six months of chemo. So that's kind of where I'm at right now is getting through the chemo. The chemo is just kind of a, in case there were any cells floating around, let's just try to kill them while we're there. So Right. Well, that's what we're doing now is going through. So I'm a perfectly healthy person who's going through chemo wow. uh, with cancer. And I imagine like adjusting to the, the new lifestyle of not having a stomach and the diet and then having chemo on top of that has got to be pretty challenging for you to like keep your nutrition up. It actually hasn't been as hard for me because so since you guys kind of know me, um, I was really strictly low carb before this and mm -hmm. I had been for a couple years, two, three years, trying to lose some of that extra fluff. And so I really was not, uh, I was strict. I was not eating a lot of bread and pasta and, you know, the, the evil carb foods. And, um, and now I get to eat all of those as much as I want, which is funny. <laughs> because, you know, that's like a couple ounces uh, every couple hours. But there are treats. So you look for your treats. And I, I don't think about food the same way that I used to. Um, I eat all day. I haven't had as many issues with food as some people have, right. um, but I also introduce foods really slowly. So I'm, you know, I'm really cautious about, about the things that are going in. But for me, it really, other than chemo, you know, chemo is a bummer. I'm not going to say it's fun at all. It really is a bummer. But I think um, had it not been for the chemo, I would already be doing regular activities by now. Right, right. Wow. Right. And you, uh, we spoke before this interview that you went back to work at just five weeks, which I think is incredible. I did. 
I did, but I'm fortunate that I have, you know, I sit behind a computer for most of the day. I have my own office. And so I was really isolated from having to see a lot of people, you know, as far as my, my immune system. Um, but week five and six, I worked from home half time just to say like, how is this going to, is this going to exhaust me? Uh, week seven, I went back into the office full time and I've been there ever since. Have not taken a, a sick day yet. I work on chemo days while I'm plugged in. That's incredible. That's so incredible. You can do it. Just being you can do it. healthy before this. Yeah, I think so. Oh, that had to have. You bounced back so quick. But, you know, so, I mean, I'm not going to say I was the healthiest person on the planet. I was doing low carb, but I'm also, you know, 50, and I probably could have used some more cardio in my life. So I think I was pretty average when I went into having the surgery. So as far as when people say, well, the, the younger you are, the – easier the recovery I you know I don't know I've had a really good recovery and, and I'm getting kind of up there right so I want to know like and are you have any having any ill side effects or are you just like I'm getting the impression that it's just you feel great um there's always a down days um so most of those are chemo related but uh as far as food intake I had my actual very first uh bile reflux situation last night okay. so that's almost we're like three months out before I had one um, and I think I just laid back in the recliner too soon after eating and so oh. things started coming back up so these are like just little lessons that you have to learn how your body reacts to all the different food and um, I think I've gotten off pretty easy um, as far as the repiping I always like to say they turn me into a hybrid version yeah of my and so, you know, I'm running pretty good. And uh, what about, now you said that you, sh I, I assume that you used to work out before the gastrectomy. Are you back to doing any workouts now? Not yet. I did a lot of walking and, and I did, I was at the gym for a while. Um, I tried the treadmill a little bit and it's just exhausting right now um, with chemo. And I'm probably getting in, if I'm lucky, I get about 600 calories a day. Okay. And so, you know, that seems like an extremely low amount, but I also have a really low um, activity levels. Right. Um, and it's just hard. I do know how to get more calories. So I'm not concerned about that for the future. But since so the funny thing is, since we pushed my surgery out a little bit for that wedding, I had more time in between than a lot of people have um, knowing I was going to have the surgery and then having the surgery. So I ate everything on the <laughs> I ate so much food, uh, everything I ever wanted to eat to the point where I was sick of eating food. And so I went <laughs> into surgery with a solid 20 extra pounds. Okay. Um, no. Then when I found out about it, so yeah, oh, I really bulked up. <laughs> and so <laughs> the weight that's coming off of me now, um, uh, feels really good. Uh, if I get to a point where people say, wow, that's, you're not looking quite so, so good anymore. I know how to add calories. I know how to make those um, jumbo shakes. We're just, I'm lucky that I have enough fluff that I don't have to worry about that right now. <laughs> so before your surgery, did you ever have any moments of like, what am I doing? I don't want to do this. Like backing out or you just were full steam ahead. Wow. I'm really impressed. Full by steam that. ahead. I, I think Dr. Davis, I mean, you guys know he, uh, he knows what he's doing and I'd call him the man with the million dollar hands. You know, he, he convinced me in the way that he does things uniquely that he was my best option. Um, and I still feel that way. Uh, when I talked to him, I just felt like I was lucky to, to be treated by him and I need to be grateful for the opportunity. So yeah. I was definitely not going to wait. That's how I feel. Anytime we leave the NIH, I'm like, I am so grateful that we found the NIH and have Jeremy Davis taking care of us. Cause he does. He's just, he's incredible. I love him so much. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I, I fully I trust him. even though we're 3000 miles apart. I know, right. I really want to know about your water intake. Cause Taylor and I try to get a gallon of water a day. And we heard like from other people that that's a hard <laughs> thing to ingest once your stomach is removed. Yeah, a gallon, that's, I mean, that's just not going to happen. Right. It, it's not, because you can't eat and drink at the same time. Um, right. There's not enough room, and sometimes it makes people sick if they try to eat and drink at the same time. So if you're not eating, you're drinking, but you're always eating every couple hours. And so I would say on a good day, I can, I can maybe get 20 ounces in. Okay. 
Yeah. But a lot of times I'm drinking things like protein water. Right. So if I'm drinking a water, it's because protein is your best friend. So right. if you're always eating protein with every meal, you're less likely to get sick. So we learn that like you might think that it would be healthy to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, but if they're raw, then you run the risk of them, you know, getting causing blockages. And so right. things that have been considered healthy foods before are not necessarily healthy foods now. Right, right. So are you working closely with Rachel, the um, nutritionist at NIH? Is she checking I up am. frequently? She 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 does the the normal checkups you know that you would do if so i'm not going over in person right now because of chemo so i look forward to you know being able to get over there again um but yeah she is on it and it's funny because you're always a little nervous when you have a rachel appointment because i'm i'm thinking of all of the cheetos that i've eaten you know and, uh you know <laughs> am i drinking enough water am i am i gonna make rachel you know happy with my decisions and really? but you always come away with good tips and i know she's always there but i i've had a pretty easy go um well, and maybe that's because i'm I'm picking good foods, you know, like for breakfast, I'll do like cream of wheat, which goes down nice and smooth. Right. Okay. So yeah. you are on uh, this, the path of six month of chemo and um, you're going every Tuesday for that? Every other Tuesday. Okay. So it'll be March before I'm done. Okay. And what, what is that chemo like? Are you going to be losing your hair or? I'm really fortunate that this chemo that they have me on, one of the side effects is not hair loss. And, um, but, but due to malnutrition, my hair is getting very thin anyways. And so I've had to kind of go up a little bit. You know, um, I do have my major, you know, superhero haircut just waiting in the wings if we've got to go super short. So I'm prepared. <laughs> yeah, I'm prepared for that. But, um, I think I'm on one of the milder um, chemo regimens. And so I feel pretty lucky that it takes me about four days to recover. So if I'll get chemo on a Tuesday, um, I'm back at work Wednesday with a little ball attached to my chemo pour and a fanny pack. Everybody at work is really excited to see my chemo ball. And, and so uh, then I work from home Thursday and Friday on a chemo week because they, I just feel real icky on those days. And then after four days, the fog lifts, and I feel great again for a week. Good, good. And then you gotta go back. Well, and we do it have again. been praying for you. Yeah, I. You yeah. know, ever since we've heard your story, and the doctor um, found that stage three, we've just well, I thought it was stage two, but we've been praying really hard for you, and we'll continue. Well, and I'll tell you. So this is, I mean, it was almost stage four. So. Yeah just by mistake and this is just the difference between uh doctors and and regions but um when i came back here and met with my oncologist team here where i get chemo uh, and we did all the ct scans and all of the mris and that fun stuff they saw some bruising um on my liver which was really concerning and so the doctor here said you know i'm 60 percent sure that you have stage four cancer and it's already in your liver and uh, so I had that to deal with for a good week, week and a half. Um, okay. It really, it was bruising from the surgery. Okay. Okay. Thank goodness. And so, yeah. So he, he needed to communicate with Dr. Davis. Um, and after that, you know, he was like, well, you know, are you grateful? It's only stage three. And so it's kind of, there are a lot, there's a lot of education. So every time you meet a new doctor, you really have to educate them on what is truly oh. happening in your body. Um, because, uh, you know, for a week and a half, I was thinking, well, you know, it's time to start writing those final letters. I'm at stage four, oh, you know, gosh, which true. I never was, you know, and the funny thing is that for a doctor to put a number on it and say, I'm 60% sure that you have stage four that's cancer. Not, that's not nice. That's not nice. That's like giving yeah. someone like our dad, yeah. the doctor always tells them how much time he has left to survive. It's like, why? Well, I, I don't think yeah. there should be a time of or a number. Well, on I'm, I am a realist. And so I may have been poking him a little bit. Like, oh. what do you think? What do you think? Yeah. But, um, you know, maybe he could have said 50, 50. That would have been a good answer. Right. But 60. So. Well, yeah. thank goodness it turned out to not be that. So now yeah. you have five kids. I do. I have five awesome adult children. And have they been tested for CDH1? Uh, so three of them, three of the five have been tested. So I have twins that are 24 girls and they are positive. And then my son um, who was tested is negative. And I've got two more 
who will need to test. One will test in January. And, and you know, I'm hoping that the rest of them are negative, but the twins will definitely have to make some decisions. Have they joined a study? Uh, they haven't, but um, they're going to. I think they're both going to join surveillance. Uh, and, you know, we're talking about maybe waiting until after they have children or, you know, what is the best time for them? They've got some time to right. to think yeah. about. Right, right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Again, again, with your family and just going back with your history, because we understand that plays a huge role in, in whether or not your signet cells are going to trigger or not. So... Um, you said that you have had, they had a lot of different kinds of cancers. Can you speak more toward that? Do you know about that history of what kinds of cancer your dad's head of the family had? A little bit. Um, a lot of my information is secondhand. And so a lot of it is really, um, you know, what, what my aunt has told me. And so there ha there's a lot of pancreatic cancer. Okay. Um, that's what my dad passed from pancreatic. And then we just had his his brother was just diagnosed with pancreatic. So there's like three. So of six siblings, it's pancreatic, it's breast cancer, and uh, and there's some brain cancer in there too. Oh. So no one actually had diagnosed stomach cancer, but there, you know, we didn't find out about CDH1 until you know just recently, the '90s. So um, I don't think they're really looking for stomach cancer a lot of times. And right. then we just recently learned that they may have had the stomach cancer and then it spread to the other organs and it was like misdiagnosed. Yeah. Well, and also, so there's a connection between like cleft palate, cleft lip and CDH1. And so oh. my dad had, uh, had cleft palate. And when I mentioned that to Dr. Davis, he was like, oh yeah, yeah, there, there is that connection. Oh, so we know yeah, we know that it's from his side of the family. But, you know, the funny thing is his, although he's already gone, his mother is still alive. Um, you know, she's in her 90s. And I think she had breast cancer, oh, maybe in her in her 20s or 30s. Uh, wow. But she's still there, you know, doing her line dancing and living her life. Is she going to get tested for the mutation? I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -mm. No need now, huh? In her no, it doesn't. Yeah, right. I mean, she's living a great life, and uh, but all of her kids have been afflicted by some type of cancer. Right. Oh, wow. That's so sad. Mm -hmm. So do you have any advice for people like Taylor and I who have not yet gone forward with gastrectomy, um, like encouraging words or advice for us? You know, we're all so unique, and I know everybody likes to look at how much time you, that you have, and um, I just didn't want a ticking time bomb inside me to think about every day, um, which is why I just wanted to get it out of me. And I had no idea that it, that my stomach was so affected already. I just wanted it out. And so, you know, listen to what your body is saying. And if you want to get that TG, if you want to have it out, don't let anybody talk you out of it. But if you want to wait, I, we all just have to make our own decisions. Yeah. You know, I would hate for someone to get a TG and then feel like it somehow lessened their quality of life. I don't feel like it's lessened my quality of life at all. That's awesome. You know, I'm not that's incredible. That's so encouraging. That's very us. encouraging. Very. Yeah, no, I really don't feel that way at all. Um, of course, like the first month is horrible and you're thinking, why did I do this? This is, I'm drinking out of shot glasses for nutrition, you know? Uh, so I just kind of looked at everything as, uh, humorous and amusing and I try to have a positive outlook and you know I bought some fancy shot glasses for dinner you know <laughs> so I would have three little shot glasses lined up you know, broth and jello and um, so just, you know, just what, what can you do I mean I just don't um I don't want to be bummed out about about life in general and I want to get back to doing things I love like hiking and um traveling and uh because I think maybe it helped. I was so strict with my food before. This is just a different kind of strict. So I always carry food in my purse and, and in the car. And when we go on trips, I always pack my own. So I don't ever feel scared that I'm going to be somewhere where I don't have food to eat. I always have some peanut butter in my purse, you know. Right. Um, yeah. It's, it's just, very helpful for your daughters to see you going through that. This and make, probably makes them feel a little bit more uh, comforted. And, and I, I hope. So they're, 
the twins are identical, uh, but they have completely opposite um, ideas on how they would like to handle this situation. So one is gung ho for a TG like today if she could get one, and the other one would just like to not think about it. Right. Yeah, that's sort of like us. <laughs> I know I'm the one that wants to do it. She, but she's like, nine years younger. But I don't know. Yeah. We'll yeah, I will. I've kind of I've suggested they do surveillance together so that they can travel together and right. um, just be each other's support. So I think that's good. Um, but I definitely think one will will go sooner than the other. Right. Right. Well, that was so cool, insightful, and so interesting. We appreciate your story so much, yeah. and we will continue to pray for you while you are battling the stage three, or I guess it's, you're pretty much cured since it was removed, but going through your- Well, that's what the chemo's for. We won't be cured. You know, you're never really cured. That's the thing. It's, you know, we can get those tests to find out if, if we're cleared, but the way these cells are, they just, they're kind of sneaky. So I, I almost wouldn't want to feel cured. You just kind of wait until the next test and we'll see what happens then. And we'll see which body part you need to take after that. Right. So. right. You have the best yeah. app. You really do. Yeah. Well, thanks. We need to thanks. be more like you. We do. <laughs> So you need to plan your uh, upcoming spring break trip then, because when you're done with chemo, it'll be spring break time, and hopefully you can start yes. traveling. Yes, uh, we already we have already talked about it. It's it's in the works. Good. <laughs> yes. One more thing I want to know, because my husband's having a hard time with this. How has your husband handled your gastrectomy and your change of um, diet? He, well, so he's been really awesome. He traveled over with me, he travels with me, you know, to all of my appointments. He goes to all of my chemo appointments. Um, he has really just a hundred percent, whatever we need to do. That's his, his attitude. And, you know, we're lucky that we don't have small children anymore that we need to plan meals for. So I will eat, I will make for myself and then he makes what he wants to. So we're not in a uh, situation where I feel like I need to cook what he likes and then cook what I like. We just kind of decided you do you and I'll do me. Right. And, and, and yeah. as we learn together about what I can eat, when we find something that we can both eat at the same time, we get really excited about it. <laughs> That's a little thing, huh? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, he's, he's super, super awesome. That's really good to yeah. know. It's good to have a support system like that. Good. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, we appreciate your time so much. And we hope that this will raise awareness to other people that are headed down the same path. And I think that it will. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think that when we found out we had the mutation, we just like searched the internet, just trying to find a positive story. And um, this is hard. We, we hope this is going to be helpful for a lot of yeah. people out there to hear these stories. I hope so. I, you know, I didn't, I'm not going through all of this just so that I can, um, you know, slow down. I mean, like I'm 110 miles an hour out of the gate. And so when we're through this chemo, I'm going back to, you know, being crazy me that I was. Good. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, well, thank well, you so much, you. Becca. We, we love having you in our life. And we feel like we're, we're French. We have a good friendship with you just on the internet, which is so thank you. <laughs> I, well, I love all my new seahorse friends. And so I really feel the same way. I love that we can talk about things that nobody else understands. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Becca. You have a wonderful weekend and yes, you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. So, so fun talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you need updates, you just let me know. Okay. Well, thank you so much. It. And thank you okay, everybody bye. for watching. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. <laughs> bye. Bye.